Hey everyone, VJohnnyC here with another Old School RuneScape Trailblazer video. Today I want to discuss one of the most popular regions in Old School. Will it be the same in Trailblazer, considering it has Western Provinces bundled in? But also, what are some of the downfalls with picking Kandarin? Let's get right into it. Choosing to unlock the Kandarin region is probably near the top of everybody's list. I know for sure it is on mine. You actually get the whole entire Monkey Madness 2 quest line auto completed. You'll also get King's Ransom, though the Knight's Waves are not completed for you. You do still have to unlock those yourself in order to get Chivalry and Piety Prayers. Everyone's most dreaded quest is also auto completed. One small favor, which is going to allow us to complete Swan Song even faster. Now, there are still some high requirements, but at least you don't have to complete one small favor. Another big one in Kandarin that is not auto unlocked is going to be Dwarf Cannon, which does require Asgarnia. So just be aware of that. You're not going to be able to auto complete Dwarf Cannon, and you also won't be able to complete Dwarf Cannon just by unlocking Kandarin. You will need Asgarnia. You also will not be able to unlock the Ibn Staff as the Underground Pass is blocked. You cannot access it. Because one small favor is auto completed, you will immediately be able to make Guthix rest, which might even be an, a low level herb lore training, considering it only requires low level herbs to create. It will also be your early to mid game, maybe even late game anti venoms. There are two achievement diaries that are available in Kandarin. You have the Kandarin diary. You also have the Western Provinces diary. Now the Western Provinces diary is gonna be really good for your mid to late game. Not only does it unlock Elite Void for you, should you actually choose to unlock Asgarnia, it also will unlock the private hunting ground for Red Chin Champas. I would expect the Red Chin hunting ground to be pretty packed, and so getting that diary done early is going to accelerate your character completion that much quicker. Now, one of the biggest reasons for unlocking Kandarin is going to be access to the Zenite Jewelry. Since Monkey Madness 2 is auto-completed, you essentially can start killing Demonic Gorillas immediately. Now, whether you have the gear or not, that's going to depend on your character's progression. I did want to talk about some math real quick on actually obtaining Onyx required to create that Zenite Jewelry. Being able to craft that jewelry is going to be really late game considering the crafting requirements. You'll need about 29,000 Chaos Runes at about 90 GP each. That brings you out to about 2.7, 2.8 mil, depending on when you're actually able to purchase them. Now, each Chaos Rune does sell for 31 Tokul each, provided you have the Karamja gloves unlocked. That will be required in order for you to actually create Zenai Jewelry. Now, one thing I did want to bring up, if you're not unlocking Prif, that's really the only way for you to get Onyx, which is also the only way for you to create Zenite. So just be aware of that. I'm curious to see what the shops look like later on in the league, especially since everyone's going to be buying these Onyx. Now, Jagex has said that they are going to increase the refresh rate for the items in these shops, but who knows what that means for Onyx. There's a lot of training areas in the Kandarin region. Most notably, you have the Arty Knights, you have the hunting grounds, you have woodcutting quite literally everywhere. Fishing spots, you have Catherby, you also have the Fishing Guild, as well as Minnows, but Minnows will also require fishing contests which should be completable just within Kandarin. I would like to note that the Dwarven Tunnel crossing underneath White Wolf Mountain to Berthorpe is not accessible from the Kandarin side. You will need Asgarnia unlocked in order to get into that tunnel. As for bosses in the Kandarin region, you do have the Demi bosses or Semi bosses, the Demonic Gorillas, which do drop plenty of rune items, uh, quite a lot of things for your mid to high level character, as well as Zenite. Now, they have said that there will be increased drop rates for Zenite. You also get access to the Kraken should your Slayer level be high enough, which is going to drop that Trident for you, as well as the Kraken Tentacle, which do also have increased drop rates. Now, Barbarian Assault really isn't mentioned as far as bosses go, but the Queen is technically still a boss. You do need to kill her in order to obtain a Fighter Torso if you're going for that. Even less mentioned, the random rolls on the Barbarian drop table actually might be a great source of resources for your early level, mid level character. You'll also be able to kill the Thermonuclear Smoke Devil for the Occult Necklace as well as the Smoke Battle Staff. Now, in order to upgrade that Smoke Battle Staff into the Mystic Battle Staff, which by the way, I didn't know this, but apparently upgrading it to the Mystic Battle Staff will actually provide you with a 10% accuracy and 10% damage increase for your standard spell book. Now that will require Asgarnia for the Scorpion Catcher quest. 
Thank you all so much for making it to the end of the video. Real quick, I wanted to talk about Terranwen versus Kandarin. Myself, I am looking at maybe not taking Kandarin and perhaps going Terranwen instead because of the increased items and drop rates in Prif uh, with Zolra and all the bosses that are out there. It's looking pretty... It does look like it's contending with Kandarin. There's a lot of things going for Kandarin, but I think maybe for Go Kandarin and instead take Terranwen. Now, I haven't actually decided. I am torn between the two. But anyways, thank you guys so much for making it to the end of the video. Leave me a like and subscribe if you guys don't mind. I appreciate all the support you guys have given me as a new YouTuber. As for previous videos, I've got them listed here.